Introduction to Designing Directory Services Before we can think about designing our Windows 2000 directory services infrastructure, so let's take a quick look in review at some of the different logical and physical components of the Active Directory. First we have the Windows 2000 takes the format of a DNS name. Okay, It is a Windows 2000 domain name. Anything that is created in the same structure as that original domain. So you want it to exist within the same US name. So if we have another domain we want to create and we're going to call it support dot that would be a child domain. Now if we want to create another domain within the same Windows 2000 Enterprise here but we don't want to maintain that same over here call it what we want but it would not be a child domain domains that we create are considered to be one Windows 2000 tree so we've got domains now we've got tree and if we create another now we've got a second tree and so now we've got a forest so when we're talking about that Windows 2000 enterprise that I alluded to earlier you create one domain you've got a domain a tree and a forest but if you elaborate out, this is what the, another domain under that, that would be a child domain. This is your tree, a discontiguous namespace, a second tree, the whole thing collectively called a forest. An unit. An organizational unit is how we're going to divide users, computers, and different Active Directory objects into containers as entities, as groups of, of computers, users, or whatnot. So this is what makes up the main components of our logical we're also going to take into consideration when we do our directory services design the physical infrastructure so when we're talking about physical infrastructure we're talking okay so we've got one site here one site here and the idea is you want to group all of your computers regard on a high bandwidth network now if there's low bandwidth that goes between these two sites say this is only a 56k link then from these computers down here to these computers down here and by creating two different sites and linking the two sites what we can do is to flow between these two areas of high bandwidth so anytime it has to use this low bandwidth link then we want to compress the traffic and we want to schedule it domains trees forests OUs physical components sites okay let's get into the creation of our design talk about the different considerations so what are the factors that we're going to take into consideration when we do our design when you take the test they're going to give you a scenario and you're going to have to try to figure out what is the best way to set up naming for this particular delegation etc so first thing that we want to look at is the naming strategy now when we do GY strategy what we're going to be doing is trying to figure out for particular company's needs how should we set up DNS should we use an active internet domain name should we have a plain pure internal domain name that'll never go to the when we're talking about our DNS we'll have a whole video on doing naming strategy okay the second thing that we want to consider when we're designing our directories and we'll see that there's single domain environments where we'll talk about the reasons why you would want to create a second domain why you would have to create a second domain and some of the pros and cons of creating that second domain so disadvantage so we'll go into all the different considerations when we're talking about structuring our different domains next we'll talk about the easiest thing to do as far as developing a design because all you have to do is get a big topographical layout of a particular company think create the appropriate site links so the considerations that we might want to think about here are going to be well when is this particular business is it a night business and so you would want to schedule your your traffic across those site links to be opposite those those hours of of heavy use probably the easiest thing to do to design because we're just looking at what is the physical architecture of your network not a whole lot of uh, argument at group policy now some companies may decide that they don't want to have a real heavy reliance on group policy See, the better off they're going to be because of the extremely flexible and large amount of functionality that you have with the group policy all the different things that you can do with group policy and where you can do it so we'll be thinking about group policy at the site level at the domain level at the OU and so we'll we'll try to develop our group policy that way the overriding principle with the group policy is you want to keep it as simple as possible. so simple that they can definitely use it and manipulate it and change it and grow with it into the future 
Okay, next we'll look at... And here's where we're going to be trying to determine how does a particular company manage its IS resources. It's West, do they manage by marketing, business, etc. We're going to try to think about all the different changes that might happen over the next five years so that they can continue to delegate if their departments all get redesigned or reorganized or whatever. Okay, and then finally, schema is the database definition. So with our schema, that's where we have the different Active Directory object. And one example of when the schema is modified is if you load Exchange 2000. Exchange 2000 will modify this of the, the mailbox, the mail list, etc. So we're going to need to figure out who's going to be modifying that schema and then need that person being able to access that particular server to modify the schema as efficiently as possible. It includes training on how to modify. We need to be real careful with the schema. Okay, so we've got our different design considerations then. Let's talk about the design process. The design process for designing directory services per Microsoft is the following steps. You identify the needs, make... Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the needs. Now, what we're talking about here is business needs. It's very important that you have the business itself, what they're in business to make money for, not the needs of the IT. What you want to try to avoid is letting the technology dictates, dictates the design, and then you use the technology to fill in those needs. Okay, what we want to do is we do want to take for the administration of the structure. So while we're taking into account the actual business needs to, design, to that directory services structure, then what we really need to be thinking about is the IS department. Because when we're looking at the Active Directory software, when we're deploying remote installation RIS workstations, it's IS that's going to be doing all that. And so if they have certain structure should flow. So business needs so that the business can make money, but IS needs so that this structure can be administered. Beta is. So one of the first things I always do is try to get a feel for what's most important. Do you want the absolute cheapest solution that will meet your needs? Do you want the absolute best solution that will meet your needs? Is efficient driving motivator for this particular business? And try to key on that as you develop your design. And then finally, as far as growth. So any potential reorganization that the business or the organization knows about right now, what do you anticipate could possibly be a change in this organization? So if you could ever foresee yourself buying a subsidiary, well, we need... So typically, you want to design for five years. That's what, the, that's what Microsoft says is a good amount of time to, to develop it. Take into consideration if you can, at least five years of, whoops, five years of growth this is to make the decisions. Now, the way I look at making decisions is you develop these different decisions going this way, pros and cons for going that way, but you develop these decision points so that the business or try to develop this design, they don't get clouded with the smaller issues that aren't really important as decision points, but instead, if I, if I say, well, what do you think I should do here? Should I call the administrator account admin or administrator? If I'm making a decision point out of every look, it's going to be a big mess. So instead, we develop major decision points, and this would be something like, well, what do you want to name a single domain? Do you want to have s stuff like that? So you're saying, you're, you're saying big things, and at these different decision points, Make sure that you are very clear on the pros and cons for going each way. And then, what I think is most important, delegate that so you have the business itself serving its own needs by making these major decisions. So as long as you're provided informed uh, pros and cons for that particular decision point, then you can't go wrong either way because you're getting what the business needs, as long as or another. So as we make our decision points then, we're trying to determine where are the major points where okay whenever we're having these decision points we're going to probably want to do a risk analysis where we say if uh, you do this here's what you're risking okay so uh, maybe if you decide to have one server with raid and tape too much at risk because you are protecting yourself but if you go with windows clustering or network load balancing then your risk is substantially going to cost you a little bit more money 
So we're developing these decision points and incorporating risk analysis into there. And so when we want to go at all these different decision points, it makes it a whole lot easier to actually implement the design because they're now owners of. Okay, so once we have our decision points and our decisions done, now we establish guidelines and we follow the guidelines. Make everything as simple as possible. Okay, you don't want to have filtering on your group policy. You don't want to have something that is so complex that if one little thing breaks, it's impossible to manage or to fix. You want everything possible. We want to allow for plenty of time for testing. One little hole in it, and if we don't adequately test it in an offline environment, then we'll put it into production and it'll be a major failure because of that one little hit or whatever. So always make sure that the guidelines include adequate testing. And then finally, another good thing to do with your guide go, document how you made the design, why you've developed the risk analysis and the decision points where you did. It's going to protect you against anything that someone might say, hey, that was a bad decision or that was a bad design. If you've got the reasons, the pros and the cons, and have a much more sturdy, much more durable document in that Active Directory, Directory Services design. Okay, so that's the design into consideration what the business needs as well as what IS or IT needs for administering that, IS, that Directory Services structure. Asking for a decision, we're going to have good documentation for pros for cons. We're going to have a risk analysis where we identify the business to accept those particular risks or we don't make that decision. Once they accept the risk, then they own that process. We're going to try to stick to these guidelines. Make the design as simple as possible. Allow lots of time for testing. And logical structure of the Active Directory, the domains, trees, forests, OUs, we reviewed the physical structure of the sites, developing our directory services design, and we're going to see that there's going to be videos on each of these subjects as we go through the rest of this exam pack. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Thank you.